This is a day in the life of a Japanese natto maker. This is Kazu, 27 years old, living in Tokyo, and he's just waking up for work. At the moment, he's between apartments, so he's been living with his parents for the last several months, just until he's able to find his new apartment. Luckily, his family lives in central Tokyo, which makes his transition a bit more comfortable. How long does it take for you to get ready? Oh, and that's his mom! So Kazu's having a very traditional Japanese breakfast. Rice, miso soup with veggies and tofu, nori seaweed and natto, fermented soybeans. Well balanced, nutritious and perfect for starting the day on a light stomach. <laughs> Interestingly though, many may think rice is the go-to breakfast carb choice for Japanese. But when questioned, 56% of Japanese today answered that they tend to choose bread over rice. Given the typical workday in Japan, it seems only natural for people who are in a morning rush to save on time preparing a bowl of rice. And speaking of morning rush, Kazu's dad who's in real estate has already left for work today, while his mom, who takes care of the home, keeps him company for breakfast. Apparently though, these days in Japan, stay-at-home mothers are becoming less common and a 70% return to work after childbirth. Do you eat breakfast every day? How's life moving back? <laughs> you don't eat breakfast? Not even natto? So how do you like your son moving back home? So what do you love about your son the most? Oh, what did he give you? That's so nice of him. Oh, Kaz is adding a raw egg to his natto rice. Although raw eggs may seem strange in other countries, in Japan, eggs are expected to also be eaten raw. So there are very strict sanitary regulations in place during the production stage to make it safe. Also, before distributed, it's clean, sterilized, and generally marked with a two-week expiration. Although Kazu currently lives in central Tokyo, his workplace is located on the outskirts of the metropolitan area, so he must commute first by train and then by bus to get there. A bit more of a refreshing commute, traveling in the opposite direction from most commuters. And just before working at his current job, he worked as a freelance online writer. Through one of his projects, he got to know the owner of his current company. At the time, his now boss had just acquired a natto company and was in the process of rebuilding the business. Kazu got along well with the boss and was offered the job to head the production side of the business. Good morning everyone, I'm back with another day in the life. This one has been a long time coming, but we're finally here. Luckily, Kazu should be coming on the bus right now. Good morning. Did you sleep well last night? So Kazu works at Amakusa Natto, a specialized natto shop established in 2019. They craft a premium high quality natto, all 100% by hand. A relatively young company with only a few staff producing some of the best handmade natto possible. First thing he does in the morning, like many Japanese salarymen, is check his email. He is responsible for communicating with various suppliers and distributors, such as supermarkets, so he tends to this first to ensure that all orders are on schedule.
He still has some time before the store opens, so he makes use of it by checking on the soybeans, which have been soaking in the water throughout the night. So, what are you exactly checking for? Natto, aka fermented soybeans, is probably most known worldwide for its powerful smell, distinctive flavor, and gooey texture. But the shop uniquely crafts our natto with less smell and gooiness, making it more palatable for customers while still maintaining its superfood and extremely nutritious qualities. Regardless, 85% of the Japanese population have come to enjoy natto's ultra unique taste and texture, including my two year old son. Cool, there's a little room. It's called Mudo. It's where the soybeans are fermented to about 40 degrees at high humidity. The kitchen uses a method called Sumibi Hako, meaning that the heated charcoal is used to speed up the fermentation process. What are you doing now? Apparently, if the soybeans are over fermented, it creates a less than pleasant smell, so it needs to be inspected by hand, one by one. Were you able to tell the difference in the smell from the beginning? I guess that's the only way to master a skill. After the soybeans finish the fermentation in the charcoal heated room, it goes through another fermentation process in the refrigerator. Fermenting soybeans is a rather sensitive process as healthy living bacteria is used, so it's critical that the muro is thoroughly cleaned each and every time it's used. This ensures that the older bacteria doesn't remain in the room, helping produce a more consistent product. So it's just before 11 a.m. so he starts to prepare opening up the shop. Wow, the first customer is already here! Since the shop creates specialized premium natto flavors, unlike the factory produced ones found at the standard Japanese supermarket, Kazu explains to customers recommended ways to eat each natto product, including the different foods and sauces which would pair well, kind of like a natto sommelier. For example, one of their natto products pairs perfectly with corned beef and another one with cheese. Oh, she brought a gift! How nice! While he manages the store, he also works on the natto production. He now wraps the fully fermented natto into its final packaging. This process is also performed by hand, and each package is inspected once again before it's offered to customers. What kind of natto is that? So it looks like Kaz is going to be doing this just for a little bit. So while he's doing this, let's do what we do and explore this place. Okay, so this is the front of the store. Looks like they got some beans over here. Let's go check it out. This one is a green soybean from Niigata. This one is a tiny round soybean from Yamagata. And Kuro Sengoku black soybeans from Hokkaido. There's so many different kinds, no beans about it. So I guess those are beans. I think over there is a refrigerator. Let's go see what's inside. Huh. I guess it's what you would expect. They have the natto in here. This is the natto tare and you got some mustard. That's cool, kind of matches the Tokyo merch. Oh, there's one more person. Hi, what are you doing? Wait, you're the owner? Cool beans! Oh, the other workers are here. How long have you been working here? <laughs> While Kazu works on the final products, the other workers prepare the soybeans that he checked earlier this morning for steaming. The soaked soybeans can be placed in a bag so that they can be relocated into a pressure pot, as special wooden paper is inserted between the bags to prevent the different colored beans from bleeding into one another. Apparently, soybeans of the same size can be placed in the same pot despite being a different type and color. Good job. 
Oh, a salesperson from the sauce company they use is visiting. It's still common practice in Japan for salespeople to regularly visit shops to talk to their customers. As in Japan, much of business is fostered through relationships and maintaining them. And it wouldn't be good business manners to stop by your customer's office without bringing a gift. Now, the workers prepare the wrappers, which is a key piece when it comes to their natto. They use thinly sliced wooden paper made of akamatsu, Japanese red pine, which helps remove the strong smell of natto. In fact, akamatsu paper was commonly used in the past by many natto producers, but due to its high cost and time it takes to fold, many natto producers today have stopped using it. Why do you wet the paper? <laughs> So unsurprisingly, it is quite warm in here. They just steamed all of the natto, they took it out of the pressure cooker, and they're packing it all in these wrappers. So she's preparing the natto keen, bacteria for the natto fermentation. This is the very ingredient which transforms the soybeans into natto. It's spread over the soybeans which were steamed earlier. So why did you decide to work here? <laughs> oh, there's Kazu! Now he joins the team to help with the natto production. They add natto bacteria twice, once right after the soybeans are steamed, and then one more time after it's soaked in a bit. Now, Kazu makes sure that every single soybean is coated in the natto keen. At this stage, Kazu inspects each soybean one by one, removing any odd or misshaped ones. Now that the soybeans are completely coated, they work as a team to wrap it up in the Akamatsu wooden sheets. It's so quiet in here. <laughs> Now, Kazu takes a quick break before he continues on with his work. Sometimes though, when managing the shop, production, and customers, he gets really busy and forgets to take a break. So, it was just you and the owner when the business started? Wait, you didn't eat lunch! <laughs> Huh, I just eat the natto from here. Now he heats up the charcoal for the muro, and while he watches the stove, he uses this time to chat with his coworkers. By the way, you and the owner have a very similar hairstyle. <laughs> so what do you do outside of work? <laughs> oh, what did you think? <laughs> I don't know, it's just crazy that we're talking about it here. Oh, you're all done? <laughs> What are you going to do? <laughs> and you? <laughs> oh, I guess the charcoal is ready. Now, the wrapped soybeans are brought into the heated muro to speed up the first round of fermentation. Oh, it seems like they're receiving a soybean delivery today. Soybeans are the fundamental ingredient for natto, so it's critical that the shop maintain a healthy relationship with their soybean wholesaler. Depending on what area in Japan the soybeans are grown, conditions could vary significantly each year. So it's important that the shop are kept up to date about the condition and quality of each bag, so that they can adjust their recipes accordingly. Now, Kazu washes the soybeans and soaks them for tomorrow's batch. Since the pot only fits about 3 kilograms of soybeans, he has to plan on how many of each type of soybean to wash. In fact, soybeans are one of the most important ingredients in Japanese cuisine, as 3.5 billion tons of soybeans are used every year, and it can be found in the most common Japanese ingredients such as tofu, soy sauce, miso, pinnacle powder, and of course, natto, included every day in Japanese meals any time of the day. So what's the hardest part about making natto. Have you messed it up before? <laughs> now 
now, Kazu prepares more charcoal to add inside of the muro to maintain a consistent room temperature. Apparently, charcoal helps remove the distinctive natto smell, hence they use it in the muro. Oh, I should also mention that the shop uses a full pot of hot water to help steam the room and keep the humidity high. Now that all of the natto production tasks are done, he once again checks his email and watches the storefront, all part of a typical day for him. So how was today's sales? <laughs> Yay! Finally done! Oh, he's back nearby his home station. Tonight, he's having dinner and drinks at a local Japanese izakaya with some friends he's known since he was a kid growing up in the area. I guess he's the first one to arrive. Apparently, he's a Jode, aka regular customer here since back in the day. So how long have you known Kazu? Wow, that's crazy! How old is this restaurant? Congratulations! I guess Kazu is like their son! Finally, everyone is here! Apparently, his friend is a rapper. Hey, can you rap something? Not the big boy. So it looks like Kazu is going to be here until 9 and then probably go home and then go to sleep at 12. But that's pretty much a day in life of a Japanese and outdoor worker. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.